Distal femur fracture, supracondylar femur fracture. Supracondylar femur fractures can occur in young patients due to high energy trauma. And when it occurs in older patients, it's usually due to low energy trauma, such as a fall. The bone is usually osteoporotic. When you see a supracondylar fracture of the femur involving the joint, you need to achieve anatomic reduction of the joint, provide a stable fixation for the fracture, and achieve the proper length, alignment, and rotation. We hope the stable fixation will allow the patient to have an early range of motion and that will help the cartilage repair. The supracondylar fracture of the femur is a complicated injury. The distal femur is usually shattered and the joint can be involved. The patient may have poor bone quality. There may be a prosthesis or a previous fracture that may complicate management of this fracture. The fracture can be open in about 5 to 10% of the patients and there is an increased incidence of non-union and malunion with these fractures. Sometimes there will be a vascular injury and the patient may have decreased pulses compared to the other side. You can get an ABI and you may want to get a CTA or arteriogram. In this situation, you may want to use external fixture initially. Distal femur anatomy from the joint to the metaphyseal diaphyseal area is about 15 cm. The distal femur is trapezoidal in shape. The posterior portion is wider than the anterior portion. The medial aspect of the trochlear groove is lower. The medial side shows a 25 degree decrease in width from posterior to anterior. Hardware inserted from the lateral side may penetrate into the joint. Try to direct the screws away from the joint to avoid joint penetration. When placing screws across the condyles, the X-ray may appear as if the screws are within the bone. However, the screws may be long and protruding medially, causing an occult postoperative irritation and pain. The screw should end one centimeter short of the projected medial cortex. An internal rotation view of the distal femur will help you to see the prominent and long screws. The posterior half of both condyles lies posterior to the femoral shaft, so the lateral axis of the femur is anterior. Half a fracture is a coronal fracture of the lateral condyle of the femur. The fracture can be missed. Suspect half a fracture in comminuted fracture of the distal femur. You may see a double density on the AP view. The fracture line can be seen on the lateral or the oblique view. CT scan will definitely show the fracture. This fracture may require different and separate fixation than the supracondylar plate fixation. Fracture displacement. The gastrocnemius muscle pulled the distal fragment into recurvatum or extension. The hamstring and quadriceps cause shortening of the fracture. Treatment. Non-operative treatment is rare and is used for non-displaced fractures in patients with comorbidities and or for non-ambulatory patients. 
surgery will probably require preoperative planning and may want to use a plate or a rod in this situation. You rarely use external fixtures. The retrograde femoral nailing is minimally invasive. It is ideal for ipsilateral femoral neck and shaft fractures when two devices are used. The rod should be inserted proximally to the level of the lesser trochanter. It is important to select the proper location for insertion of the rod. The starting point is the center of the intercondylar notch, just superior to the Blumensat line. Check the proper depth of the rod to avoid prominence in the joint. Check the distal screws. It may be long. You may need an internal rotation view to diagnose that. Surgery. Plating of the distal femur. The approach is usually lateral and minimally invasive. The anterolateral approach will allow you to see the joint and reduce the intraarticular fracture under direct vision. The joint fragments must be reduced anatomically and the fixation has to be stable. The medial approach, you may use anti-glide plate for the medial condylar fracture of the distal femur. Fracture of the distal femur after knee replacement called periprosthetic fracture. If the prosthesis is stable, then you will do fixation. Do fixation with a plate or a rod if the rod can be inserted through the femoral component. If the prosthesis is not stable, then you will do revision of the prosthesis. The whole idea is limited incisions with exposure of the joint if necessary and no soft tissue stripping. The plating is usually done percutaneous or submuscular. It is called biologic fixation or minimally invasive plate fixation. You will do direct reduction for the intraarticular fracture. However, for the metaphyseal diaphyseal fracture, which is usually comminuted, you will do indirect reduction. You will use traction without disturbing a soft tissue to align and approximate the bony fragments together. Watch the length, the rotation, and the alignment of the extremity, and then apply the plate into the bone. This indirect reduction and biologic plating will preserve the soft tissue and the blood supply, allowing for earlier and better healing of the fracture. You will reduce the articular surface by lag screws, and you will put the screws where it will not interfere with the plate fixation. In osteoprotic bone, a locking plate system is usually used. The locking compression plate will allow better control of the coronal fracture, the hafa fracture, and the comminuted fracture fragments. The locking plates may be too stiff and non-unions may occur. It is better to use plates that will allow for the use of locking and regular screws. Try not to use the older condylar buttress plates because it doesn't allow locking and if the fracture is comminuted, it may go into varus. Locking screws will prevent varus malalignment. Proper plate placement will prevent malreduction. If you place the plate too distal and posteriorly, you may get a golf club deformity and medialization of the condyles. 
Fixation of the distal femur fractures is not without complications. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.